Uh, there's so many different products and services that you could go into. Um, maybe mm -hmm. give us an overview of like, what are you guys doing? Uh, and then talk about kind of the why, like, why are you pursuing those yeah. versus, you know, the hundreds of other things that you could be doing with your time, uh, money and resources? Sure, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, a lot of what we're about is, you know, you have a very similar philosophy. It's about making the migration from institutional investors into this technology and asset class. And I think when you think about that and the way that these institutions are set up, the, the starting point always is going to be custody, right? You need to have a custody that can be trusted, it can be secure, um, and it's viable. Right now, you know, there hasn't been a major hack for such a long time that people are just not that concerned about custody, but institutions always will be. And so we had a look at a lot of the custody offerings on the street. We actually acquired one, um, but then we, we just got to the point where we're like, look, there, there's nothing that we really can rely on to the degree that we need. Um, so we hired a team that's led by uh, an ex um, Ministry of Defense security specialist, um, and they they built out what today is Digivolt and one of the most secure um, and solid offerings on the street. I often describe the cold custody as as below freezing um, because it is just you know it's actually operated out of, of global vaults of the vault provider Malka Emit, so you can you can set up a vault anywhere in the world. And specify that's where you where you want your your keys kept. So that's sort of the foundation and the the sort of where everything else is able to be built from. At the center of it all is our exchange, Equos. So Equos is really focused, and you know there are loads of exchanges out there. So why have another one? And I think the big important point here is that we've built differentiated product in the fact that we have infrastructure that is able to accommodate these institutions that are coming in. I'll give you a basic example. Right now, you log on to any exchange, even if you go with the, the pro version or the institutional version, you get one login for your account, right? That's non-manageable for an institution when they come in. They need to have segregation of duty. They need to have their ops team, their trading team, their compliance team, their audit team, all to have different access and different ways that they can access that account. And so that's basic stuff, you know, the stuff that we've built into the framework of Equos to allow that first step of institutions to come in. Another thing is managed accounts. So think about the, the asset management industry in this space at the moment. It's quite nascent. Right? Many of the asset managers, and we have an asset manager that we speak to because we're a fund of funds, they don't understand that they need to have separate custody to be investable by institutions. Right? They don't understand how they should be marking their books. They've got ICOs still marked at 2017 prices because they've never traded. You know, so they, they, like, there's a lot wrong with the way that current asset management landscape works. And so we built a fund of fund really to help develop that. But also, when you think about that in the context of the exchange, actually provide a service to those funds of managed account functionality like we see in traditional finance. So, you know, your New York pension fund that you, you got to come into Bitcoin, you get, get them to go and allocate to a strategy within that, but say, okay, you can run it through a regulated platform where you know your assets are safe, you know if they drift off mandate that you can pull them off it, and actually you can, you can really have proper control over that strategy, much like we do in the, in the hedge fund industry today, post-2008. You know, a, lot, a lot of the allocations are made by managed accounts through prime brokers. So the exchange is really designed to give that institutional capacity to really grow this industry and really grow the asset management industry as well. But then when we think about retail, I mean, because it's not just an institutional platform, it's about making sure that we can have everyone participate. So obviously, for retail, we want to make sure that people are looked after fairly. A lot of you know the experience that people have on some of these platforms is that they you know, they get ripped off or their fees are too high or they get the uh, liquidations happening of, of some of the levered products and you know very very much against them um, and so you know everything that we've designed is about making sure that we're fair we're transparent um, and obviously that we've got that product innovation that really allows people to 
to to manage their portfolios in a way that that this this technology allows. Because you you know you look at everything that we've got. We've got you got Bitcoin as an asset, right? You can, you can just sit it in your cold custodian, or you can start to trade derivatives around that position to maximize the value within the portfolio. But you can also lend it as well as collateral and actually receive fees for it. So actually, it's starting to take finance into your own hands and be able to really build around that core collateral of Bitcoin with other products. And that's the longer term vision of what we're doing at Equos, putting it all together where you've got a really nice ecosystem to allow you to really manage your assets properly. So this starts to look very similar to what the traditional world did with fiat currency-based assets, right? And, and it almost feels like what you're trying to do and doing pretty well is recreating all of the things that we know that work in the traditional world in terms of a, a product suite and kind of how those interact with each other. Now just redoing it for digital assets. Do you think that's a fair uh, categorization? Um, and maybe talk a little bit about, uh, there, there are a couple of wrinkles or changes there, but in, in kind of how you decide when do you follow the traditional playbook versus when do you kind of, you know, quote, unquote, go rogue and, and create a new crypto way to do something? Yeah, like it's, um, yeah, it's very valid. And, and we are looking at, at everything that we've learned from traditional finance and, and bringing it to this industry to help really uh, grow the industry and make it properly adopted. So, for example, derivatives. So derivatives are a huge focus of us. I'm a derivative guy. The original founder is a derivative guy. Our chairman's a derivative guy. I mean, everybody within the senior part of the management of the organization on the product side is a derivative guy. So we're very focused on effectively building that out, allowing the op options market to really grow. And then when you have, as you know, a full options market of, of every strike and every, every, uh, every maturity, then you can start to build things like fixed products. Suddenly, the whole thing becomes a lot more hedgeable. Then you can start to build things like variants and structured products and all these types of things. Structured products obviously feeds the volatility into the market. And then you've, you, you've got all these products that, that institutions want to play with right? and want to be able to manage their portfolio risk around. So for us, derivatives is a very core part of, as you say, bringing that institutional level of finance into this industry and going, okay, we started with that perpetual product. Everything else is quite nascent, and we really need to start to grow it out to, to allow this industry to hit the sort of numbers that we see in traditional finance. Like right now, the spot market of crypto is, I don't know, it's $4 billion a day that it trades, and then you've got derivatives is another... 12 to 14, depending on the day. So on a good day, you can have a, a 20 billion market, but derivatives is only really three, four times the market. But in traditional FX, you know, derivatives is over a hundred times the spot market. So the, the capacity for growth there is enormous. And we're right at the beginning. Uh, and obviously derivatives have grown quite significantly over the last couple of years. But uh, we really think that's going to continue. And that's really where we focus the opportunity set now for the business. But then the other part is our investment bank itself, and that's more down the line. So we've taken a slightly different approach to many of the other guys that are offering digital securities in this space, or security tokens, as they're called. Um, <clears throat> and rather than enforce on investors that they take a digital security, because that immediately wipes out like 95% of any institutional investor, because they're just not going to get it through risk or product committee is we actually deliver our assets in paper form with the option when they're ready to take it in digital. So they can flip it into a digital security in the future. Now, obviously that, that's helpful to us as well because we don't have the correct licensing at this point for the exchange to allow us to list securities. And we don't yet have the correct license for the custodian either, although we do have all the infrastructure there already around the different standards of Ethereum that we're seeing the majority of these tokens being built on. But yeah, it's, it's about licensing. So a big, big drawback always is, is the pace of regulation around this. Um, so yeah, those are probably the two key areas is, is the derivative market and then the, the digital security market. 